Hello again, and it's time for another project. Nice, easy, simple one today. It's literally just going to be a single flower in a single pot. And imagine it at 8 inches by 5 inches across. And what we're going to use on this one today, we're going to do a bit of scroll saw to cut round it, a bit of router to go around that circle, around those bottom two petals. And we're going to clear all this out with the router. And then we'll use a Dremel with some engraving bits and sanding drum. And we're just going to put a bit of shape in and give it a nice tidy up. We're not going to bother with that line down the middle there. That was an afterthought. So even though it's a nice simple project, we're actually going to use a scroll saw, a router and a Dremel or any rotary tool that you have. Now, as always for me, what I've started doing now is literally just tracing out my template. I just literally went on the internet and put in flower template and plant pot template. And there's two separate templates and it's just a line drawing. And you can literally just put your tracing paper onto your tablet or your laptop and draw around. I tend to zoom mine out to the size of my wood, which is six inches across. So I tend to make my little projects five inches, if not five and a half. So we've drawn it around from our computer or tablet. Then we place it on the wood with a bit of painter's tape you can put pins in there if you want to. Remember, we only want the middle section, so you could pin that down. Just keep it in place. And as always for me, a nice bit of carbon paper underneath, like so. And draw around that again with a pen. And that will nicely transfer the image onto the wood, like so. Nice and nice, simple little project. But by the time we've finished, we will have one, two, three maybe four levels on this so it gets a little bit complicated but it's so so simple and the effect at the end will look the worth the little effort even though it's only a small little project now you've got your own way of doing things i'm sure when i first started doing these kind of scroll saw router projects i would tend to route out all what i wanted to do first and then cut it out on the saw afterwards but then i noticed i was working on two different levels because we've routed out this area and this was higher. So what I do now is literally just do the scroll saw inside of things first. So we're going to cut it all out. And we're just going to leave a little section there to keep it intact. A little bit tight at the top there. So we might leave a little section there. Just to keep it connected to the surrounding area. That way we'll have a bit more room for the router to work on. And we're not going to be dipping off the edges here. Because we've also already removed the outer section. Now we don't want to come in with a blade just from the outside. If we just come in straight in and straight out that way, that bit's just going to fall off. So I drilled two little pilot holes first, feed it through, cut it all out, and then come on the opposite side, cut it all out. And like I say, it'll just be left with those two little tabs. And then once we've done all our route inside of things, we can come back, take that tab off, take that tab off, and that will fall out nicely. And then we can use the Dremel side just to start shaping and give it a bit more to it now the blades i like to use is simple spiral blade fortunately i have to use these adapter clamps on my trapper saw quite an old saw but it, it works for me on your newer ones they all have fancy clamps that will just nip hold of that and like any spiral blade straight cut blade pinless or pinned you want to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up that way you know you've got your blade in the right way Always have the teeth facing towards you on a scroll saw. However, on a spiral blade, you can put it in anyway, basically, because it spirals the full length. The good thing about spiral blades, they will cut in any direction. So we can literally just put that on the saw like that. Start there with a blade and just feed it across. Whereas a straight blade, you'd have to come down here, turn that, turn that, turn that, turn that, and so on, so on. Some fantastic people out there can do fantastic jobs. I just prefer a spiral blade. So we'll cut that out first with that one. Then we'll get onto the router side of things. Another two minute job. Basically gonna use one of these CNC bits. They do have a Dremel size shaft, 3.175. So you will need an adapter reducer collet, 6.35. And that lifts your slots into the silver end. That will now fit a quarter inch router shank. If you've got an half inch one, you're also gonna need a bigger adapter. We'll set that to three millimeters. I tend to use three millimeters on all my projects. I made myself a little device like this. You can purchase depth things 
we set it to three meters which i know is that one there and all we're literally going to do is go around the circle there and the bottom two petals that's all we're going to do with the router so then that one will be out of the way once we've done that we're going to remove all of this pot to a slightly lower level so you'll have one two three different levels remember we've already cut around it with a scroll saw so i'll pop on one of these straight flush bits i normally use n milling bits but this is quite a chunky little thing they do come in different sizes the bigger ones can really be aggressive so you don't want something like that back off when i first started these projects i used that on everything from the lines to the clear out of the lot and i've done a lot of projects those little things before i even discovered these little cnc bits and we're going to have a 20 degree one today they do come in different degrees 15 tens there's tens and 15s in that one and that's literally just the angle of the point on the end there as you can see from that so remember we've cut it out we've done the router the router we've done the straight flush bit here we go to remove all that and then we'll remove it from the wood and start using the dremel okay so there's all our little bits ready let's start cutting this one out Right, you can see from that we've gone all the way around with the scroll saw. Nice, nice, easy cut. But obviously we've left that little tab there and that little tab there. And we'll remove those after we've finished going around there with the CNC bit and around those bottom two petals. And then we'll put on the straight flush bit and remove all this section completely. We'll draw a little line back in there because obviously we're going to route that out and then we'll lower this bottom section just a little bit just so you can see that little lip all the way around the pot itself and obviously as i said before we leave it inside the framework just allow for the base of the router just got a, a better area for it to run on i have done it before when i can re removed it completely but if you come towards the end here you just might find yourself dipping about and messing about a bit so try and leave as much wood as you can and remove it at a later stage okay like i say literally around there and then two petals there to remove it's going to pop on our little cnc bit 20 mil on this one i believe any will do for this project we'll we are just going around that circle and there so we pop it into our adapter collet like so you want it in the silver end now we pop that into the router and that's now got a quarter inch shaft on it so we'll do that quickly round there round there and then we'll come back with the straight flush bit and remove that section right you can see from that we've gone round the center of the flower and we've gone round the bottom of those two petals and that's it for the cnc bit you notice i've removed a section there just because the bigger piece we're going to put on now the straight flush bit well, obviously won't fit in there so i made a big enough area so we can set this in the router we'll set it to the same depth as that i'm basically just going to remove all the pot and then we'll get a pencil, do a quick line back on there again, 
and then just lower this section with the same piece. Okay, we'll do that next. Right, you can see from that we've removed the pot altogether. Now it's still a bit rough and ready, just cheap, cheap fencing wood, remember. So I suppose you only get what you pay for. But it does sand up really nice. It may just take a little bit longer to sort it out. But ideal for those that's just starting out on these kind of little projects. Obviously, that's all been routed out to three millimeters deep now, so we've lost our little line. So we're just a simple case of putting our line back on again. You could leave that out and literally just stain it, colour it, whatever you want to, and it won't really matter. But we're just going to put it on quickly like that with a line. And I'll just put our little line on back on again. You can just see from that. It doesn't matter if it's not too straight. We are going to sand inside it. So as we sand it, we'll just start curving that round slightly. So now for the last stage for our router is to leave the straight flush bin. And we're just going to lower this section here. Just by a millimetre or so, just so it gives you that little lip. Okay, we'll do that next. Right, so we've made it all the way round. We've cleared all our bottom section. So we've got that level there, it comes up slightly to that level just for the lip of the pot and then it comes up again for the level of the petal. And once we've lowered the section around the centrepiece that will look even higher still. So even though it's a small little project we've got three if not four different levels on it. So you've still got the same amount of work that you would put maybe on something a little bit bigger. Now the next stage, just before we actually release it from its surround, remember we've got a little tab there and we've got that one there which we'll cut off with a scroll saw and this will pop out nicely. Remember we've just left that there just for the router to run on and we want the same on the back. Now obviously we can see the slit there because we've already cut it out and the good thing about cutting it out first is when you come in with the router bits you can just come right to the edge there and actually go over that if you wanted to because remember this is all just waste wood around the surround so for the hanging purposes i like to use a t-slot bit and just basically just route out a nice slit in the back and the screw will go in there and then we'll just slide that across once it's all routed out and it's fantastic for hanging i'll just show you quickly this one before we remove it from the surround this is your t-slot bit i'll use a 5 sixteenths. i don't know if you're going to see that there today it's messing about there we go so it's quarter inch shaft it's a 5 16, the smallest one I could find. It's just a nice size for the size of the screw heads I use. So we'll pop that in the router now. As always for me, I've had a piece of scrap wood to one side with a depth that I know that works, which is that one there. So I set my router to that depth. It's the same piece of wood. I know it's not going to come through the other side. And that is enough for that screw to go in there. You slide it on. And that's going to be, excuse me, that's going to be on there solid. And that's ideal for hanging your projects like so. And you can just slide it off and remove it. Bigger projects, you can actually put two slits in. Okay, I quickly route this out just to show you. And then I'll cut it out on the scroll saw and then we're onto the Dremel side of things. Right, so we removed our two little tabs, top and bottom, that were holding the surrounding place. And there's our little project that we're trying to do today. 
nice simple simple project but it'll look quite effective once we've finished with the dremel putting a bit of shape into these petals we're going to lower the outer surround of that circle literally down three millimeters remember we cut that with a cnc bit and we're just going to round these edges off and just put some kind of effect into those petals there just to make it so it's not so flat now for that i'm going to use a dremel any rotary tool will do I cannot recommend one of these flexi cables enough. Absolutely fantastic. I wouldn't be without this. This is just a cheap, cheap eBay special. I've had no issues with it. If you do purchase one of these, if you just say quickly, you do have to get a separate square locking nut. And the locking nut, which is a bolt that fits on the end of your, sorry, a nut that fits on the end of your Dremel. So the cable, the inner cable of this can fit into it, costs more than the actual flexi cable itself seriously i can't work that out at all and you would think if you were purchasing one of these you would get a locking nut with it but just remember you've got to purchase that separate anyway so we're going to use that with some sanding drums on these are all just cheap cheap ebay specials a couple of sizes bigger one for the side bits just to give it a nice tidy up like so and then i use some of these engraving bits these are also ebay specials really cheap they're ideal for wood, I've certainly got no problem. And we'll get one with a nice flat one on, just to get in there and give it a nice tidy up. And there's a round headed one, a little ball one, and here it is. And we'll use that and we're going to dab onto that centerpiece just to give it a nice effect of a flower. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and film all this now. We'll speed things up a bit. I think we all get the general idea of what we're after. And then we'll come back, hopefully, when this has all been shaped and sanded down. And we'll be ready to put our paints on. Right, that's enough sanding down and general shaping for me. You can see from that, we've got a nice little speckly centre on that one. There we go. And we've feathered out the petals, if you know what I mean, just towards. So there's different depths there. And a little bit of shaping, not too fantastic. These little projects are basically go on the side of my shed. But good, good, fun little projects that basically anybody can do. Now for painting purposes, we are going to paint it all. We're going to get some nice oranges and reds and a bit of white and just mix it in and we'll see what we end up with once we finish painting it. Just cheap, cheap acrylic paints. I use Crawford and Black. You get a bit of water in it so it soaks into the wood nicely. It makes more of a stain than an actual paint, if that makes sense. Now for the pot itself, I'm going to use Rustin's wood dye. This is a light teak and it goes on really nice. Just watch it with any of your stains or your dyes they do tend to spread well so don't put it on over thickly i'll just show you quickly on the bottom itself and then i'll go away and paint the acrylics but this goes on really nice but you can see there how it spreads so you've got to be a bit careful especially when we go around here we don't want to put it on too thick you just paint like so and let it just find its own way and should you need to I'll tend to let it dry and then we come back and put another coat on top. That's just for the pot, remember. For the flower itself, we're going to use nice acrylic paint. Okay, I'll go away. Once it's all been painted, we'll spray on some nice yacht varnish, give it a nice shine, and then this little project will be finished.
Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now I gave it a good three or four coats of the yacht varnish, nice gloss finish, just to give it a little bit of a shine and a little bit more protection with it going outside. It won't be the best finish in the world, but for my little shed, it serves its purpose. And you can see from that, it gives it a nice shine. And that's it, these little projects are finished. Now, there might only be small little projects, but remember, we better use the scroll saw with a Pegasus number five spiral blade. We use a router with a CNC bit to do these sections there. And then we used a straight flush bit to remove all this section here, and then a Dremel. So we've used quite a few little tools on this one today. And the ideal little practice pieces for somebody that's maybe just starting out and want to give it a go. Remember, it's just cheap fencing wood. Now, if you've done one of these, we might as well do another one there, as you can see from that one there. And this one may need a little bit more watering, as it's not quite come up to its full potential. And there you go, just nice, nice, easy little projects. So, the two big ones measuring at eight inches by five inches across, and this one looks like five inches by five inches. Just nice, nice, easy little projects. Now we're going to put these on the shed with the rest of them. Thank you very much for watching.